Welcome to the most disappointing episode of Matt's Movie Nights. Uh, last time we talked about some Sister Street Fighter tangential films. Starting with Sister Street Fighter 5th Level Fist. This was not intended to be a part of the Sister Street Fighter series. It was released in 1975, a year after the first two Sister Street Fighter movies. Uh, and it, it stars Et Etsuko Shihomi. Uh, and was directed by the guy who directed uh, the Street Fighter trilogy. So, when it came to America, they are just kind of like, eh, yeah, make it a Sister Street Fighter movie. Why not? And, um, it's definitely the least interesting of the entire Sister Street Fighter franchise. So, like, the, the bad guys are sort of using this kung fu movie they're filming as a front to other illegal activities. So a lot of it takes place on a film set, and in fact, it reminds me quite a lot of Why Don't You Play in Hell, which is, uh, Why Don't You Go Play in Hell? There might be a go in there. Why Don't You Go Play in Hell, um, another Japanese film from, like, 2012 about, like, these two Yakuza gangs teaming up to make a movie. <laughs> That's a really good movie. We're definitely going to have to watch that one. I, I love Why Don't You Go Play in Hell. A uh, lot more interesting than Sister Street Fighter 5th Level Fist. Uh, just incredibly dull, not, not near as inventive as the other Sister Street Fighter movies. You can kind of tell it's not supposed to be in the Sister Street Fighter series because it starts with her with her parents and they're like, Oh, come on, you need to, to, to get married. You're just a, a young single gal who needs to settle down. And uh, it's that's just clearly not in line with her character in previous Sister Street Fighter movies. She does have another sibling in this one. Uh, you know, we, we were talking about all of her fucking relatives in the other movies. If we're counting this as canon, which it isn't, but if we're counting this as canon, she's got another brother in this movie who uh, dies. He dies. <laughs> they all die. All of her relatives. If, if you are related to this girl, you're either Sonny Chiba or you're dead. Um, ironic, considering what has happened to Sonny Chiba as of late. God damn. I, um, I, I told you this was going to be the most disappointing episode I've ever done because I have next to nothing to say about this movie. Um, I have next to nothing to say about our last movie, which means most of this video is going to be dedicated to me talking about Lady Street Fighter. And even that, I don't know how much I have to say about... I don't know, Sister Street Fighter 5th Little Fist, it's not... Bad. If you like the others, it's it's worth checking out. Like, cause I, I gave a pretty blanket recommendation to this nice little Arrow video release. Uh, so you know, if you've got the Arrow video release, you like the other ones, it's worth looking at. But it's it's not near as interesting as the other three. Uh, I I vastly prefer the first three Sister Street Fighter movies. Yeah, Sister. Sister Street Fighter 5th Level Fist, that's all I have to say. I have nothing else to say. Then we watched Lady Street Fighter, a, a pretty blatant, like, rip-off cash-in on the Street Fighter franchise. I mean, it came out in the 80s, so... I don't know. Uh, to be fair, Street Fighter is a pretty loose term. You could argue this isn't infringing on the Street Fighter series, but, you know, it's not the only movie that just sticks the word lady in front of an action movie title. You know, I reviewed Lady Terminator, and I've intended to get around to the uh, Lady Rambo. There's a Japanese movie called Lady Rambo. I just, uh, I haven't gotten to that one yet. So, in Lady Street Fighter, uh, Renee Harmon is the, the, she wrote the movie, and she stars in it as the titular Lady Street Fighter. Um, she, uh, previously has appeared in 
Frozen Screams, the video nasty. And in fact, it's, it's a meeting of the video nasty minds because the film was directed by James Bryan, who also directed Don't Go Into the Woods, which I am probably going to end up recommending for this show somewhere down the line because it's very silly. In the movie, uh, Renee Harmon is, is tracking down a gang of drug dealers and, and pimp drug dealers because they killed her sister, which I'm pretty sure was the plot of all of the sister Street Fighter movies, so not really helping your case that you're distinct from the sister Street Fighter movies there. So yeah, she's, uh, she's infiltrating this criminal organization that killed her sister, um, and, and getting revenge for her sister's death. It is not very good, but it is a whole hell of a lot of fun. It's, it's a very silly movie, um, not... Not, not the first time that's happened on this show. This is a, an American genre film archive release. And I, I buy these AGFA releases just because, you know, I, I want to support AGFA. They're a non-profit. I, I really support the things they do. So I try to buy all of their Blu-rays. But uh, most of what they put out tends to be not very good, but pretty silly, pretty fun. This is, this is a lot of fun. This is a, a fun movie to sit through. Rene Harmon uh, barely speaks English. <laughs> um, and it's just, you know, it, it's absolute exploitation. It's, it's violence and nudity and drugs and, and everything you want from an exploitation film. <laughs> See, if this episode is like 15 minutes, is anyone even gonna notice? Oh, we, we, we do have another Carradine in this movie. Uh, not David, it's Trace Carradine! The rarest of all Carradines! Um, it's, we've, we've seen, what, two or three John Carradine movies at this point? At least two, I think three. Yes, three. He was in Vampire Hookers, he was in The Howling, and he was in... Uh, Evils of the Night, that's what that was called. <laughs> Just like, lesbian alien bloodsuckers. Uh, it's, uh, Evils of the Night. So, here's another Carradine, Trace Carradine, the rare Carradine. Um, I'm sure we've got David Carradine somewhere on the, so, somewhere on the docket. We're, we're going to see David here soon enough. So, uh, uh, back of this box, uh, Agfa says Trace Carradine is one of the Carradine brothers. Uh, from what I can tell, he is not. He's, it's just coincidentally named Carradine. I blame Agfa for this mistake. They were misleading me. This is one of the few Agfa releases that comes with liner notes. They don't, they don't do liner notes for a lot of their uh, releases, so I'm, I'm very glad to have this. Yeah, Lady Street Fighter, it's a fun time. I, I kind of recommend it. Uh, at least just to, like, point and laugh at, if nothing else. Ooh. I'm knocking these fuckers over. That's just, I'm, that's a bad habit of mine. After that, I foolishly recommended Revenge of Lady Street Fighter... Not really knowing what it was, I... Because it's, it's the second feature on here. It has, you know, bonus movie, Revenge of Lady Street Fighter, the unreleased sequel to Lady Street Fighter. The word sequel there is very, very deceptive. This is not a sequel. Like, during the movie, I was comparing it to Boogeyman 2 and uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, but at least those have, like, some original content. It's, like, an excessive amount of the first film, but most of the movie is something new. Revenge of Lady Street Fighter is just Lady Street Fighter again. There's, like, five minutes of new footage. Some of you may recall I showed a film called Lucifer's Women, uh, which had a, a re-edited version called Dr. Dracula. 
uh, which also featured John Carradine. Um, and I, I talked briefly about Dr. Dracula, the, the re-edited version of Lucifer's Women. It, Dr. Dracula has more original footage than Revenge of Lady Street Fighter. So, yeah, that was a mistake. That's, uh, that's probably now the recommendation I regret the most. And that's kind of on me, just for not knowing that that's what Lady Street, Revenge of Lady Street Fighter was. Although, I, I feel like Agfa could have been a little more forthcoming with that on the box. Could have been, like, like an unreleased re-edit of Street Fighter, of Lady Street Fighter, not... A sequel, because it's not a sequel. It's just a re-edited version of the first film. Uh, apparently it was sort of like a, a Cool Cat Kid superhero situation. Although even Cool Cat Kid superhero, I think, has more unique footage than Revenge of Lady Street Fighter. But it was a situation where, like, the first movie wasn't very popular, and it didn't get into a lot of theaters, and they wanted to get it a theatrical release, so they slightly re-edited it, they added some new stuff in there, so that they could be like, no, this is a brand new movie, we've never tried selling this movie before. So yeah, if, if you get the uh, Agfa Lady Street Fighter release, be aware, Revenge of Lady Street Fighter is not a new movie. It is not a different movie. It is, in fact, a re-edited version of the same movie. There's, like, five minutes tops of, like, a woman talking to police. And, and it's like, oh, well, let me tell you what happened, police. It's like a framing device where she's talking to the police, and that gives them a chance to flash back to the first movie. And they just show the first movie in its entirety. So, yeah. Uh, Revenge of Lady Street Fighter, don't recommend it. <laughs> you know, in unless you haven't seen Lady Street Fighter, and le unless you get this and you're like, oh, I want to watch the slightly extended version where there's boring scenes at a police station, because otherwise it's the same fucking movie. Um, I guess that's all I have to say about Lady Street Fighter. Uh, this was, uh, this was an unfortunate triple feature. Uh, I mean, Sister Street Fighter 5th Level Fist and Lady Street Fighter both were fine. They were, they both had enjoyable moments. But that really brought a, a th that really brought the, the night down. That was really, man, I, I wish that hadn't happened. And, and it's not even like the first two movies were good enough to make up for it. So, yeah, um, sorry about that one. Not that anyone watches these. Uh, the only person who watched these with me was my friend Kim. And I'm like, well, Kim, I'm, I'm real sorry this movie just turned out to be the movie we just watched again. Ugh, I, I, I guess let's move on to questions. Uh, last time I asked, uh, what your favorite ripoff movie was, um... And I didn't really get that many answers for this one. Um, personally, I might say Mark of the Devil, because Mark of the Devil is clearly trying to be, like, Witchfinder General, or uh, the Conquering Worm, if you're in Britain. But <laughs> that almost seems unfair, because after Mark of the Devil, there were a bunch more movies that were just like that, and it's not that similar to uh, a Witchfinder General, but it's like, it's, it's very, very similar, and it came out like a year afterwards, so it's kind of like, okay, I think you were trying to ride the coattails of Witchfinder General just a little bit here. Although, personally, I like Mark of the Devil more. Other than that... If we, if we want something that is explicitly a ripoff, I think Mac and Me is hilarious. I think it's one of the few pieces of media I've seen that I'm like, this isn't a parody, but if it was a parody, it'd be a great parody. <laughs> like, it, it almost, almost 
reads as satire of E.T. Like, it comes so close to being a satire of E.T. that... It's a, like, like, if, if there were just a little more going on, I would assume it's a parody. John August says, uh, the Transformers movie, uh, Transformers the movie, the animated one from the 80s, not the Michael Bay film. I assume, I assume that's what he's talking about. Because he, he mentions all the similarities it has to Star Wars. <laughs> and, um, man... Yeah, yeah, I mean, Transformers the movie does take a lot from Star Wars. But at the same time, I think it is unique enough that, like, I wouldn't call it a rip-off. Maybe, like, blatantly influenced by Star Wars, but a uh, rip-off seems a little far. He says, uh, some real what-the-fuck moments, and, uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Like, the movie was, like, epic, and it, it ruined the TV show. <laughs> because they, they killed Optimus Prime, and the show was not good after that. In fact, the show was pretty adamant about bringing back Optimus Prime, and even that could not save the show. I've, I've, to be fair, I have not seen that much of Transformers after the movie. I, I've seen, like right after the movie, and I'm like, wow, the movie ruined this show. Like, they they killed off all the good characters. Rob Jackson says he hasn't seen any blatant ripoffs, which, uh, thanks for the comment, I guess. I appreciate you interacting with the video. That helps my analytics. So tonight, my question is, if you were going to adapt a book into a movie, which book would you want to adapt? And, as a bonus question, uh, if you wrote a book, which I'm sure some of you have, who would you want to direct the movie of your book? Because tonight, it's authors taking things into their own hands. Uh, authors directing their own books, movie adaptations of their own books. Although this first one I don't think is actually based on a book. I think it was an original screenplay. It's Michael Crichton's Westworld, not the TV show, the, the movie the show is based on. Although, from what I can tell, the show basically just took the idea of Westworld and copied none of the plot. After that, it's... Stephen King's Maximum Overdrive, a, a brilliant movie indeed, well-beloved by everyone. Maximum Overdrive, as directed by Stephen King, his only foray into filmmaking. And finally, we have the classic, Clive Barker's Hellraiser. I can't believe it's taken me this long to get to Hellraiser. And I can't believe this is the excuse I came up with to show it. <laughs> Clive Barker's Hellraiser, everyone. That's my picks. This is the shortest episode. I, I, it's 27 minutes of footage. And usually I can edit out about 10, 5, 10 minutes of footage to, to get it, like, all the pauses and the ums and the errs and me doing whatever. So this is probably looking at barely over 20 minutes. This is the shortest episode. But you know what? I'm fine with that. These movies don't deserve any more than that. We'll have a longer one next time. I have a lot to say about Hellraiser and Westworld at the very least. Until then, have a nice day.